24 last week. This is your last chance to still get four points on it. If that's you, you need to do that now, please. I guess we're not doing minute of silence here. <coughs> so uh, nobody else needs to turn in 24. I know I got most of y'all. A lot of people did, but if you ran out of time, I said I would still take it for full points at the start of this class. OK, so um, I need to still find us a daily meme for today. I didn't realize that wasn't up there. But today's handout <coughs> needs to be numbered as 26. I wasn't able to number that for you. So please number it as 26 before you forget. And today we are going to talk about arc length again. So we did arc length just a couple weeks ago. Uh, but this is arc length and parametric equations, which is what we have been focusing on. <coughs> All right, so today's handout 26 is what we're going to start off. We're going to go over the notes, and then I'm going to ask you to do questions 1 through 5, and then I will ask you to go back and finish up the assignment from last Wednesday, which was number 25, and turn it in. Then you can come back to this one. Okay, so for arc length in parametric form, um, I can just tell you what the formula is going to be, of course, but this one's not too hard to figure out how to go from this one that we saw just a couple weeks ago. That's the arc length formula that we did when we were not doing parametric equations. Um, <clears throat> but I'd like you to at least write down uh, where this comes from, because I think you can follow most, if not all, of this. So the first thing we could do is we could change um, f prime We could change f prime. Um, if you think about how we take the derivative of parametric equations, that would be a dy dt over a dx dt. Okay, and then if we change this one to be the same thing as this, um, so instead of calling this 1, we'll call it dx dt divided by dx dt. So anything divided by itself is 1, just rewriting that. Um, the next part, <coughs> it's a little harder to see, but this and this now have something in common. <coughs> it is this part, the dt over dx. I'm going to uh, factor that out. So that's the same as d t over dx squared, dx over dt squared, plus Again, it's kind of hard to see how they factor out this um, dt over dx like that. But when you do that, the square root of something squared, the reason they're choosing to factor this out is this then, square root of this comes out uh, very nicely.
in fact I'll put it at the end the square root of dt dx squared would be just dt dx so doing this to get this leaving the rest of this alone and then finally this dx that's been here since the beginning can cancel out with this dx that I got from taking the square root of that and those cancel and then what's left behind now is the formula for arc length but within parametric so let me skim through that again real quick here I <coughs> changed f prime into what f prime is equal to for parametric equations the dy over dt divided by dx over tt what we've used the last couple classes I changed 1 into dx dt over dx dt anything divided by itself is 1 and then both of these had a dx dt that we could uh, pull out front and then the square root of something squared just gives you one of those then you can see the dx's cancel so of course you don't have to know all of that I just want anytime it's reasonable to show you where the formula comes from I just try to do that so it's just a variation of the arc length formula we've already learned but at the end we find arc length in parametric form we will integrate from a to b of the square root of dx dt squared plus dy dt squared and then we'd be integrating with respect to t this is the one you don't have to be able to derive it like I just showed you but at the very least you have to learn it through pattern recognition or memorize the formula so I think this is one of the easier lessons we've done because again I know memorizing a formula is not necessarily easy but you can do that but we've already been practicing taking the derivative of x with respect to t and the derivative of y with respect to t just a matter of throwing it together into the formula so the derivative of x with respect to time would be negative cosine t the derivative of y with respect to time y prime would be cosine t and if we want the arc length from 0 to 2 pi arc length is going to equal integrating from 0 to 2 pi the square root of dx dt squared Now, how come I got rid of this uh, negative sign? Squared. Right, it's squared, so it doesn't matter. Negative times a negative is going to be positive. Plus dy dt squared. And then, of course, <coughs> oh, and this is dt, which is good. So the integration can be more or less complicated, but that's the setup. You can take the derivative of x of t with respect to t, the derivative of y of t with respect to t, plug it in the formula, then you are on your way. And for this question, uh, you would want to recognize that all of this inside becomes what? One. And the square root of 1 is? One. And to integrate 1, we get what? So from 0 to 2 pi, plug in 2 pi, then plug in 0, and subtract them. OK, one more example. So <coughs> try to memorize the formula at the top. Arc length is going to come from integrating from 0 to 2. That's the distance here square root of <clears throat> x prime squared so take the derivative of this and square it plus the derivative of y prime squared so take the derivative of that with respect to t and square it and then you're on your way 16 plus 49 
is 50, 65. Okay, what did I lose? All right, supposed to be square root still. And integrating a constant, it's going to be the constant times the variable. The antiderivative of square root of 65 would be square root of 65t. Of course, I know it's t because of the dt, which is why it's important to carry that along. Okay, and then we can plug 2 in the first time to get 2 square root of 65 minus plug in 0 the next time to get 0 square roots of 65. So the arc length, the distance from 0 to 2 using those formulas for x and y would have a length of 2 square root of 65. Okay, if you would try question 1 on the next page or on the back. And I will go over this one with you, but only after you try it. <clears throat> okay, so there's what I got for number one. So if you got either one of those two answers, <coughs> you can move on to number two. But you can see I took the derivative of x with respect to t here, the derivative of y with respect to t here. The rest of it was just the formula. It says to square them, it says to add them, it says to take the square root of them, 
and to integrate from uh, the values you're trying to go from, so negative 1 to 3. I said 6 squared is 36, negative 4 squared was 16. Add those together, you get 52. Integrating the square root of 52, dt would be t square root of 52. Plug in 3 the first time, plug in negative 1 the second time, and subtract those. Subtracting a negative is the same as adding, which is why I said there was four of those. But the square root of 52 does break down, so if you reduce the square root of 52 into two square roots of 13, you can make this look like eight square root of 13. All of that go okay? Okay. Then <clears throat> I'm not going to uh, come around the room and offer help like that like I normally do only because I'm feeling sick and I don't want to spread that to you any more than I have to. But what I'd like you guys to do, obviously I'll help you still, I'm just gonna do it on the board. <clears throat> so I'd like you to stick with this handout th through questions one through five. So finish up the rest of this page, please. And then if there's any of those that seem harder than the rest, then we can talk about them on the board. But after you finish those, I'd like you to go back to last Wednesday's assignment and finish it up and turn it in. So that way you're having to think about what we did last time make sure that you actually remember that. <clears throat> and then if you have more time, you can come back to this and finish up the last page.
<clears throat> okay, I did share my answers to this page. That way it should help you know if you need to ask any of these questions. Sorry, I know it's kind of zoomed out, but I have to zoom it out to get my answers where they need to be.
right. Has anybody figured out that they need help with number two or number three or number four yet? Anybody need to see two, three, or four worked out? Okay. I'll check back.
Okay, I'm going to offer again for assignment 26. Number what? Number three. Number three? Sure. <clears throat> I have not done number three yet, but we can try to figure it out together. trying to find the arc length of this parametric equation so oh. so of course memorizing the formula so arc length is integrating from 1 to 4 in this question and then it was square root of dt and first you should do um, x prime squared so x prime would be 4t square that you would get 16t squared and add to that y prime squared so y prime was t squared so square that you get t to the fourth Oh, 2 is t squared, which makes this 4t to the 4th. That's okay now? Okay, so we're still okay on the same page? Okay. Um, <clears throat> now, I don't know that they did this, but one thing I would try here is I noticed that this and this both have a GCF of 4t squared. And the reason why I th think that maybe we should pull it out front of this and factor it out, I don't know. Um, <clears throat> but if I factor that out, do you see how the square root of this is a perfect square? This becomes 2t. Shouldn't the 2t squared be just a t squared? Yeah. Yes. So this becomes 2t. This is still the square root of 4 plus t squared. And it looks like we could finish this with u substitution. And I know that because if I call this u, the derivative of this would be 2t, which is the other piece of this. So I'm going to try that. I'm going to try to pick out u to be this inside stuff. Solve for du. And then rewrite this in terms of u's. So this would be the square root of u, or u to the 1 half. 2t dt is du. That was a perfect fit. But if you do use substitution, <coughs> make sure you change your bounds here. When When t is t, that's the same as u being. Uh, I think it's supposed to be a 4. Oh, how did that? There, that makes a lot more sense. Okay, when t is 4, <coughs> that would make u be 4 plus 16, which is 20. And when t is 1, you would be 5. So I'm low on space, so I'm going to use this over here. OK, now I can do the antiderivative. Raise the power by 1, divide by the new power, and we're going to evaluate from 5 to 20. So plug in 20, plug in 5 subtract those <clears throat> and okay I think we're still on the right track I just hate to keep going here if I had a, a little mistake but 
this is 20 cubed and then square root. So this is like I've got three 20s being multiplied and then square rooting it. So I know that's the same as 20 square root of 20. Are you guys okay with that? So what would this be if I do the same thing? Okay, and then actually this breaks down even more. Square root of 20 is like two square roots of five. So we end up with 2 thirds times 40 square roots of 5 minus 5 square roots of 5, which would be 35 square roots of 5. And then you multiply in that 2, and you end up with that. So as I said on the example, the note questions, you know, sometimes the integration is still going to be harder. Of course, we still need to practice u substitution, but it's really these first few steps that's what's new. So I'm going to guess those of you that struggled with this, did you did you consider u substitution? You did? Oh, okay. I'm seeing more no's than yeses, so that's okay. But that's still um, a learning experience. Certainly a longer question. Is there anything else about this y'all want to ask for number three? Okay, what about uh, four or five? Have y'all made it there? Did you go for four as well? Sure. I'm erasing all this, so. Okay, so for question four, our arc length should come from integrating 0 to 2 pi square root of x prime squared and x prime would be negative 5 sine theta so this square that would give you 25 sine squared theta plus y prime squared and y prime is 5 cosine theta so square that you get 25 cosine squared theta okay so what do these two both have in common okay so we could factor out a 25 and that's going to leave behind a sine squared theta plus a cosine squared theta, which is, of course, the same thing as 1. So all of that really just becomes the square root of 25. So all of this is really just a 5. And to integrate 5 dt, it's going to be 5t. Plug in 2t the first time to get 10 pi. Plug in 0 the second time, get 0, subtract those, you end up with 10 pi. Oh, I'm sorry. You thought it said 70? I'm sorry. 10 pi. Sorry. My handwriting's bad even when I try to make it look good. So, Okay, is that all you needed out of 4? Let me give you a little more time before I give you all the option to ask about five or one or two if you need help with one or two. But I'll leave this back up. Again, I know as you guys finish this, let me put the agenda up for a second and I'll switch back to this. So again, I'm only asking you to do questions one through five on this for right now. Just get a sampling of what you're supposed to be doing and that you've got the good idea of what you're doing. Then go back and finish last Wednesday's assignment if you did not finish it then. I didn't tell you you had to finish that on Wednesday, so you probably have a few left. Then you can turn in 25, and then if you still have time, you can work ahead on 26. Obviously, I will ask you to finish up 26 at some point, so if you have time today to do that, then you should, should just go ahead and do that. But there's those answers back up for 3, 4, and 5.
Assignment 25, make sure your name's on it. Right now we're 0 for 2, so. Luckily I saw who turned them in, so I knew. But. Oh, okay, thank you. also our last thing that we do about parametric equations. So on Wednesday we'll review an AB topic. I'll remind you of the three BC topics that we've done with parametric equations and we'll have a quiz on those and a couple AB topics on Friday. I believe this is an A week. I know everything is different difficulty for everybody. Um, so take this with a grain of salt. But if you f find that this stuff is tough, you really need to dig in <coughs> and uh, do your best as you always should. But this unit 9 compared to unit 10, unit 10 is a lot harder than unit 9. So you really want to feel very good about this unit so that you don't feel like you have as much weight on your shoulder when we get to unit 10 in series and sequences.
Okay, let me offer one more time. Can I help with today's handout number one, two, or five? Any of those you're not getting the answer to? Okay, I'm gonna stop bugging you for questions, but of course you can ask if you do end up finding something. And I'm switching back to the agenda so you know <coughs> what you need to do as you finish.
but it's not a sponsor. It says don't be confused when I tell everybody else to come in. Gotcha. <coughs> okay. Any other
Guys, you're down to just <coughs> about two minutes here. Oh no, I didn't give you a puzzle today. Uh, if you didn't get a chance to finish 25 and turn it in, your last chance will be at the start of class on Wednesday. So make sure you add that to your homework list. You don't have to have 26 finished, even though it shouldn't take you but just a second. You guys were so quiet this morning, let time slide by. Okay, you did this? Yeah. Alright. How can y'all not get the six? Blood is the water. Huh? Blood is thicker than water. Blood is thicker than water. Blood is thicker than water. Yeah. I don't know why I thought blood over the water was the same. Let's be. Be. What's number eight? I bet y'all can't get eight. Y'all are too. Oh, okay. Have a good day. I don't remember.